channel, Rolling Through Life with Tamisha. If it is your first time here, welcome. If not, welcome back. If you have not already, please hit that subscribe button so you can be notified on new episodes each week. Today, I'm going to be doing a story time about a highly requested video from you guys, which is my twin pregnancy. But before I begin, I'm going to give you guys a chance to go and grab your favorite snack. Because if you're anything like me, you can't have a story time without snacks. So go ahead, grab your snacks, and in the meantime, I'll be here waiting. I just want to say that before I begin, I want to put out there that even though I've had the beautiful gift of pregnancy twice, I am by no means a medical professional. So the topic of pregnancy discussed in this episode is unique to my own experience and my own medical circumstances. So now that we have all of the textbook stuff out of the way, let's get into it. My twins were conceived like many other babies are, which is during the honeymoon. So my husband and I had just taken our vows in California and we decided to go on a Caribbean cruise. It was for eight days, seven nights. And it was going to the Bahamas, British Islands, and St. Thomas. And we had a really good time. Fun fact about our honeymoon, it was actually um, planned during the flight back home from our destination wedding in California. <laughs> Talk about spontaneous, that's definitely us. Fast forward to when we came home from our honeymoon. I wasn't feeling so well for about two weeks after we came home. Um, I just was not feeling myself at all. And I actually spent about five days in the hospital because I had a fever that I just couldn't get rid of. And I was not feeling well at all. At this point, I was so happy and grateful that Quentin and I had included in sickness and in health in our vows because we definitely needed it in that moment in time. Comment below if you've ever spent any time in the hospital as a newlywed. I know I can't be the only one. After I came home from the hospital, um, my fever eventually went away, but my other quote-unquote sickness symptoms never did. And I was just not feeling myself. Even though the fever went away, I was waking up nauseous every morning. Um, I now know that to be morning sickness. And after a few weeks of feeling that way, I pretty much said to myself, okay, I just got married after the wedding, <clears throat> you know, the honeymoon, and my hospital stay, I sort of put two and two together, and the reality hit me that it could be a possibility that I could be pregnant. So after this epiphany that I had, and the light bulb went off, I reluctantly told my new husband to get me to pregnancy tests. And him being the frugal man that he is, he got me two 80 cent <laughs> pregnancy tests for me to take. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, when he came back home with the test, that's when reality really hit me hard. And I was just like, oh my goodness, you know, this is the moment. So I'm not going to lie, I definitely procrastinated when... Um, you know, he kept asking me to take the test. After he eventually convinced me to take the test, I eventually obliged and, spoiler alert, the tests were indeed positive. And I was just shocked. And I feel like a, in that moment, like a feeling of denial sort of hit me because I rationalized them not being positive by saying, you know, they were just not accurate because he got me the cheap kind. 
So I told him to <laughs> go back to Walmart and, you know, get a different kind. And after I took the test, I, you know, reality eventually hit me that I am indeed pregnant. And I was going to have a baby. Well, at that time, I thought it was just one baby. But, you know, reality hit me. And when I say test, I mean that in the most plural way possible. I took seven tests. Yes, seven. So when I, after the seven tests, my husband was just like, okay, this is ridiculous. You know, you have to face the music. You, you're pregnant, we're having a baby. So I eventually, you know, embraced the fact and we talked about it and I was, um, going through sort of like an emotional roller coaster of emotions that you know women go through when they find out they're pregnant. So seven pregnancy tests later, Quentin and I realized that we had a little too much fun during our honeymoon. No, I'm kidding. But you know, we really sat with the idea that we were going to become parents. And while we were excited, we there was so much unknown because neither of us had ever parented a baby before. So, you know, we did research and started looking at names for a boy and a girl. And this, you know, these are the things we started to do when we realized we were pregnant. So... We sort of sat on the idea for about a week before we decided to tell anyone. And the first person we actually told was my mom. She was the first person to know. And we actually told her on my 26th birthday when she had come over to give us um, or give me my birthday gift. But little did she know we had a gift for her. So how we told her was, we gave her a card from the baby that basically said we were going to, um, it was from the baby that basically said he or she couldn't wait to meet her as his or her grandmother. And she was super excited to say the least. She hugged and hugged us, she cried tears of joy. She was just so overwhelmed with excitement. And what I really love about my mom is that not once did she ever question how, you know, it would work in terms of my disability. She never questioned my capability to be able to have a healthy and thriving pregnancy. And I really love that about her. And to this day, she doesn't, I don't know if she knows this, but I really admire and appreciate her for that, for the way that she raised me and just the way that she believes in me like no other. But um, that was sort of the main reason why I wanted to tell her first because she definitely, aside from my husband, she's definitely my biggest supporter in life and I just couldn't think of any other person to tell first. So she was super excited. Um, she was so excited, in fact, that after we told her, she wanted to leave immediately and just go tell everyone that she could that her daughter and son-in-law was pregnant. But um, we told her to please keep it a secret. And we, you know, between her, um, my husband and myself, we decided that we were gonna tell the rest of the immediate family um, the following day, and it was going to be a birthday party um, for me, or like a birthday dinner, and we basically got a cake that said, our family will be growing by two feet. So, to my disappointment, <laughs> when everyone saw the cake, they didn't really get it. They didn't understand why the cake said what it said. They were just baffled as to why um, it didn't say just happy birthday to Alicia. So my mom, she was the one to break the news 
and she shouted to everyone, so he's just pregnant. <laughs> and after about five seconds of silence that filled the room, um, <laughs> you know, everyone was just so supportive of us. And to this day, I just couldn't imagine going through life let alone pregnancy without my support system. Let's talk about something I know you all have been sitting on the edge of your seats waiting to hear. And that is the very moment we found out we were having not one, but two babies. So let me set the scene for you. It was when we were to go to my first prenatal appointment. And at that time, I was about 10 or 11 weeks pregnant at that time. And I was super excited. I know my husband was super excited. We just kept talking about, you know, on the way there, we were talking about how excited we were to hear the baby, see the baby, and just the overall experience. And at this time, I was actually feeling um, sort of like flutters in my stomach. So I was feeling the baby um, at that time as well. So I was really excited to um, see what I've been feeling and, you know, meet our baby. And, you know, we sign in and everything and go in, we're eventually called into the room. My husband, the very moment as my husband is putting me on the table to get examined, my heart is like pounding four times faster than normal. I'm just super excited and really, really anxious at this time. So I lay down, um, they get me comfortable. The sonographer puts the jelly on my tummy and I was just super excited. Um, and she's looking for the heartbeat. As I'm laying there, she's looking for the heartbeat and I'm holding my husband's hand and looking at him and just saying, oh my goodness, this is the moment. And um, as she's looking for the heartbeat, I noticed she was taking a little longer than I had, you know, expected. Um, but she eventually found the heartbeat. And I'm a person, I'm really, really good at reading body language. So I was trying not to freak out, but I did see the baby. Um, on the monitor so I knew the baby was there and I heard the heartbeat so I knew the baby had a heartbeat but she just looked perplexed she didn't look worried or concerned she just looked perplexed she had a very perplexed look on her face and so I eventually broke the silence by saying is everything okay I asked her if everything was okay and she's like yeah everything's fine and she asked us um, so you said this is your first appointment and I said yes this is our first appointment so then she asked um are you did you guys know you were having twins and I immediately go into like a state where I just freeze like trying to process what she just asked us and I was like um I'm sorry what did you ask and she said, did you know you were having twins? And I said, no, it's our first appointment. And she said, well, you guys are having twins. And I was like, no, you're joking. And I'm, at this point, I'm looking at my husband, like, did you just hear what I just heard? Because he was as calm as could be. He was just looking like, are you serious? And I said, no, you're joking. And the sonographer was like, um, no, I don't play jokes like that. I'm, I'm very serious. So she proceeds to tell, to tell us um, that there is indeed a second heartbeat. And I was like, no, the second heartbeat is mine. <laughs> Here I go being in denial again. <laughs> so <laughs> she tells us, um, yeah, you have two heartbeats. And I was like, wow. And I eventually see the second baby. And um, my husband, like I said, he was as calm as could be at this moment. And he said, um, are they fraternal or identical? And she goes, I, you know, I'll tell you in one second. So she's proceeding to um, 
you know, look to see whether or not they were pretend or identical. And she says, no, they're identical. And I was just like, wow. And I was just so shocked. And she said, um, you didn't do any IVF, did you? And I was like, no, I don't have any IVF money. We don't have IVF money. These were natural twins. And I was just super shocked. And, um, yeah, even this moment when I think about it, I was just like, wow. The way that I processed it was just like, as you could imagine, in very slow motion. It was, it was all like very surreal for me to hear that she had just told my husband and I that we were having twins. And just to replay the timeline for you, we had just gotten married. We went on the honeymoon. I had a five day hospital stay. I had just told my family that we were pregnant. And now I have to drop another bombshell on them to tell them we're having twins. So, so much was going through my head. I mean, I can't speak for my husband, but so much was going through my head at that moment. I was just like, wow. So, um, after the appointment, it was a very, very silent ride home <laughs> for many reasons. There's just so many emotions I was going through, but you know, my primary emotion is I was very, very excited. And my husband was too. We were just super excited, but we were processing the news separately. I could tell. We were just processing it separately. So, um, oh, I forgot to mention, the sonographer did ask us if twins ran in either of our families. So I have one set of twins, but I didn't know that my husband apparently has many sets in his family. So I guess that is where the twins came from. I didn't know that until the moment of the appointment. So I was just like, oh, you couldn't have told me. And I, I guess I found out. But um, I was super excited. Nonetheless, we were super excited. And yeah, that's the moment we found out we were having not one, but two babies. Telling family and close friends that we were going to be having not one, but two babies. Of course, they were super, super supportive. Um, they were in disbelief initially, but you know, after a few sonograms later, they also processed the reality that we were having twins. But they were very, very excited. I must say that my care was not really that different than that of a pregnant, able-bodied woman. Um, I mean, the obvious elephant in the room was that I can't walk and I have a muscle disease. While this did concern doctors, um, most of the concern stemmed from the fact that I was pregnant with twins um, because that is a high risk pregnancy. Aside from me being high risk due to my muscular dystrophy, <laughs> you know, twins is a high risk pregnancy because there is a, um, I don't want to say disorder, but sort of like it, something can go wrong with an identical twin pregnancy um, called TTTS and I believe it stands for twin to twin transfusion syndrome and in layman's terms that basically um, means that one twin could steal nutrients from the other and that's a really big high risk because one or both of the babies could not make it but thankfully I did not face um, that obstacle during my pregnancy at all. I was pretty much high risk for two reasons. One, because of my disability, not being able to walk at all. And two, like I said, the twin to twin um, transfusion possibility with having twins. And a reality about me being pregnant as a disabled woman is that not much literature exists about um, caring for a patient
that's disabled and pregnant. It's just not talked about. That's the reality of it in the medical world. So because of this, I was sort of like the guinea pig for my doctors, um, as you will. But, you know, I was an advocate for myself and for my care throughout the whole pregnancy. Because at the end of the day, no one knows my body better than myself. No textbook, no doctor, um, no medical expert of any matter, a nurse or at, at all can tell me my body better than myself. So um, that sort of is what helped me get through the pregnancy uh, medically in terms of being able to be very transparent with the doctors in terms of what I could take and what um, I wouldn't be able to tolerate. So that, you know, it was a learning, I guess you could say it was like a learning experience for myself and the doctors, but more so for the doctors. Because like I said, not much literature um, exists with being or caring for a patient that is pregnant and disabled at the same time. You know, care for me during this pregnancy was pretty standard up until the moment that I gave birth. Uh, what ended up happening was I ended up being admitted during a routine appointment checkup. And the reason for that is I went in, they did the routine um, ultrasound of the babies. But this time it was observed that baby A, which is now Micah, he was intermittently um, he would go through periods without any oxygen. So it wasn't like an immediate concern, but it was a concern enough for me to be admitted into the hospital for um, observation. So I'll never forget, it was a Friday that I had my appointment. And that was on December the 16th, 2016. Um, I was admitted to the hospital, and I was a little bit, you know, weary about whether it would just be an observation or if I would end up, you know, giving birth. And the following day, um, baby A, which is now Micah, his heart rate, you know, started fluctuating, and it was making the doctor's a little uncomfortable for me to continue being pregnant. And at this point, I was 28 weeks and 5 days. So <clears throat> I was pregnant enough to give birth safely if I had to. They call it like the stage of viability for a, a baby to be born. And the survival rate, you know, increases dramatically at that point. Um, so they started talking to me about uh, possible, like, giving birth early, uh, a possible premature birth and the NICU and things like that. Um, to be honest, I sort of blocked a lot of it out because I, you know, had faith that no matter what happened, everything was going to be okay. <laughs> and I didn't really want their news. Um, to scare me or alter or shake my faith in any way. So I kind of held on to my own belief system and, you know, also the support of my family and my friends. So um, when I found out I was being admitted, of course my husband was with me. Was with me. But um, I gave my mom a phone call to let her know I was being admitted and the reason why. And she immediately left work and came to be at our side and you know the baby was fine but funny story um, when they hooked me up to monitor the babies uh, when I got admitted I was actually my contractions were actually seven minutes apart I believe yes yeah, seven minutes apart so I was just like what I was amazed by that because I mean they I mean I knew I was having contractions but they weren't like super painful you know what I mean so 
um, they eventually subsided. <clears throat> but shortly after I got admitted, I was also given um, steroids to help the baby. I was given a steroid shot to help the babies, um, their lungs to, you know, mature in the event that I did have to give birth. And fast forward, um, I did have to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I did have to give birth um, the following day, which was a Saturday. And I gave birth to two beautiful baby boys. And um, they were born at 3.11 p.m. and 3.12 p.m. Michael was born first at two pounds, seven ounces. And Mason was born right after Micah, a minute later, at 3.12 um, p.m. And he was born at 2 pounds, 9 ounces. And like I said, they're beautiful baby boys. And um, I was just so excited that I, I was a mom. I mean, I was nervous going into it right before I was prepped to give birth. Um, and when I say prepped, I actually was given um, general anesthesia because due to my rod in my back, um, I have a rod in my back due to a surgery that I had when I was younger to correct uh, scoliosis. So because of this, I was not able to get, or it's pretty dangerous for me to be administered um, you know, like the typical epidural and, you know, in the back, it, that's pretty dangerous. That would be very dangerous for me. So the safest route, it, uh, if I didn't, you know, have a vaginal birth, the next safest would be for me to, um, be put all the way under. So I did not get to hear their first cry, but it's okay. They still had, um, you know, my husband and my mom at their side, so um, that was that. And it, like I said, it's just waking up, like even though I didn't hear their first cry, um, just waking up and knowing that I was a mom. I, I mean, I was a mom from the moment I was pregnant, but just to wake up and not be pregnant anymore because my babies were born. It's just like such a surreal feeling and it's a feeling I'll never ever forget. And um, I remember asking, the first question I asked was, where are my babies? How are my babies? And they were in the NICU. Um, and you know, my mom and my husband showed me pictures and videos of them because you know, I was still recovering from the anesthesia so I couldn't go immediately to see them but in person but I did get to see them um, once I woke up with via videos and pictures and uh, like I said it's as you can tell I'm trying to tell the story and describe to you guys without getting choked up but you know the feeling is just such an amazing feeling that you get um, once your parent period, whether your mom or dad, just parenthood in general is just so amazing. And for for the gestational age that they were born, they were a good size. So all they had to focus on at this point, after, since they were born, was breathing and growing. And um, I'm not going to lie, I also felt a big relief not being pregnant anymore because having twins as you can imagine but carrying twins is quite a task but um you know I did it and I wouldn't have been able to do it without God and my support system and I definitely am so grateful that I've been blessed with such beautiful kids in general and it's, it's so amazing so Micah and Mason stayed in the NICU for about nine weeks in total. And during those nine weeks, my husband and I learned so much. Um, 
we cared for them and we stayed by their side every step of the way. Every second we could, we were at the hospital. And I stayed, um, after I gave birth, I stayed in the hospital for five days in total. So, I mean, it wasn't too bad. From my understanding, that's like the average amount of time for an able-bodied woman that has a C-section or close to it. But, um, so they were in the hospital for nine weeks and I must say, leaving the hospital without them initially was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And, but I, I know that it had to be done so that they could get healthy enough to come home. And um, like I said, they were born on December the 17th, 2016, and we were there every step of the way. Um, my husband and I even spent um, New Year's night and New Year's Eve with them at their side, and I wouldn't have changed it for the world, like, at all. I wouldn't change anything. Um, but once we... Uh, came home, it was definitely, it was a blessing. Um, I actually fought really hard for my boys to come home together because I was a big believer in the fact that we all came together and I wanted us to all leave together. Um, so I'm definitely blessed. I was able to make that happen and be their advocate for them. So they came home together and like I said, having twins in our household was definitely an adjustment, but, you know, it was a wonderful one, to say the least. And there was a lot of sleepless nights, but <clears throat> all we cared about is the fact that they were home, they were healthy, um, beautiful, and that alone overrided all and any, you know, sleepless night we could have had. Along with the sleepless nights, I pumped breast milk for my babies from the moment they were born until they were about 16 months old. And, you know, while they were in the NICU, it made me feel really good that I was able to provide them with the best possible nutrients as possible um, for them to thrive and grow. And it's funny because I pumped so much milk that I quickly adopted the name Dairy Queen amongst the staff. So that was like my nickname as a mom in the NICU. But, um, you know, it definitely was a blessing for me to be able to do that for them. And almost three years later, Micah and Mason are healthier than ever, and I couldn't be more proud as a mother. Um, when I was in the NICU, a nurse once told me, and I'll never forget this, she said, it was during a time where I was really emotional about the fact that they were not yet home. Um, and she told me, you know, I know you're upset, but the days are long, but the years are shorter. And this very moment, I definitely see that to be true because they have grown so fast. And just the fact that you can't even tell that they were premature, it, it makes me feel so good and so happy because that period in time with them being in the NICU is just a short period in time. It's like a very, very small fraction of their life compared to what their life will be. And I'm so grateful that, you know, they were able to thrive and do what they needed to do to come home while they were in the NICU. And like I said, it just amazes me how fast kids grow. To be honest, the topic of pregnancy and disability is very uncomfortable for some people. And I'm not too sure why. I mean, the reality is, us disabled people deserve the right to procreate as well. I feel like people get uncomfortable with the idea that 
there's a possibility that the disabled woman could pass on her disability to her offspring. And my stance on this is who cares? I mean, I'm disabled with children. And though my kids are healthy, thriving individuals, would it really make that much more of a difference if they had been born with muscular dystrophy? I think not. I mean, who would have been a better role model for them had they had muscular dystrophy other than yours truly? Um, I mean, I mean that metaphorically and literally because they would have had me as a role model to live the best possible life they could even with having a disability. And this definitely crossed my mind the moment that I found out I was pregnant both times. I thought about what if they had muscular dystrophy because I do have a genetic disease. So the possibility was there. But what I will say is that that thought was very brief, and I mean very, very brief, because even if they had it, yes, t life would have been a little more tougher to kind of figure out how things would work, but it wouldn't have changed my love for them, not one bit. And I feel like at the end of the day, people should just let disabled people live our lives too. We should be able to have as many kids as we want because all that matters is that we love them, they're cared for, they're clothed, they're fed, and that's really the reality. So I just wanted to leave you with that last thought before I end the story time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had fun telling you guys the story as I was reliving certain moments of my experience with my twin pregnancy. Um, of course, those of you that have been following me know that there will be a part two to this because I have to give you guys the story time of my youngest son, Tyson. Because as you all know, all pregnancies are different. So I definitely will give you guys that um, later on down the line. But because this was a highly, highly requested video, um, I wanted to give this to you guys as soon as possible. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely, um, more than anything, hope that you learned a lot from it, took a lot from it. Like I said, I'm no, by any means, no medical expert, but I hope at the end of the day, and at the end of the story time, um, if you are disabled and looking to have children, I hope it gives you hope because anything is possible. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe, feel free to share, and also um, follow me on Facebook, Rolling Through Life with Talisha uh, fan page, because I share pictures um, and other things and updates on there as well. Um, so be sure to follow that page that I'm not necessarily able to put on, on the YouTube channel. So yeah, follow me on Facebook, YouTube, share, like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, thank you for watching.